sooner. And crease it down the bottom. I think that might do it. It won't stay quite like that, but uh, that's basically the, the technique. The deep shadow there, don't want that. So let's just subdue it a bit. I also don't want a line. Some interesting textures coming through here from the um, brushwork uh, of the gesso when I prepared the board. It's quite nice. One of the things I like about working on wood rather than canvas. You don't, well, it's simple really, you don't get that canvas texture because I know I've never particularly liked the canvas texture. Okay. A bit more of a blaze of light there. That's better. It's funny, when you do things like that, sometimes you just get exactly the right angle and it's now doing what I wanted it to do. So what's going on here? What is that? Hmm. I think I think it needs changing. Uh, the top edge I like, and then I think it just needs to be brought up to there. So what's this? What's going on there? I think that is going on there. That's better. Takes away attention from it. Right, so I want a little bit of texture on this bush. Then uh, I'll work on the sky. Once I've done the sky, I'll come back down to this bottom left-hand corner, which is just uh, very unresolved at the moment. So there we have a mysterious tree. What am I going to do to that to make it look more like a tree? Because really, until you do certain things to trees, they will remain as blobs. And uh, I don't want it to be a blob. So, piece of paper. You can hear what's going on, I'll show you in a minute. I'm rolling it into a ball. Really small, tight ball, like that. And then unwrap it, and it makes the paper all nice and bumpy. Lots of lots of crinkly bits on it, in it or on it, and then use them. Get a little bunch of them together like so. Okay, so this is nice and textured here. Small texture, not big texture, because the thing I'm working on, this bush, is quite a long way from us, so you won't see necessarily lots of big shapes. Now this is where you've got to be really quick and decisive, and keep in your mind that, well, it looks quite nice, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but if, and you may think, well, if that goes wrong, I've got to start all over again. I mean, okay, not as important as world hunger, you know, but um, you can cope with it. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But try to get the mindset, well, where you don't really care. Now, um, all I'm going to do is touch it. And this is it, really. It's just touch it. And move the paper. Touch it again. Move the paper. Find another clean bit. Touch it again. Now what that's doing, well it's doing that really, isn't it? It's putting light on the what was just a flat blob and it's giving it a roundness. Still not quite what I want, so I've got another bit of textured paper here and I'm going to, not too, um, uh, what's the word? I'm not going to be too precise about the shape of the bush. I'm going to do something and then hope it works. And looks like I hoped reasonably well there. It sort of looks okay. Uh, there's a blank spot at the top. Now this, this could be a light bush in front of a dark bush. It could be light catching the edge of the dark bush. Who knows? So, uh, but what I want is, I want it to just not be too light. You know, there's a light bit, there's a dark bit. I want to take some of the light up, uh, just a touch. Like that. That I think I'm happy with that. 
<laughs> right, onto the sky. Now, maybe at this point you could tell me, are you here, are you here because you are a regular? Are you here, are you here because YouTube has shoved this in your face? Um, or are you here for the sky? Or are you here for the landscape bit? Who knows? Let me know. I'd be very interested to, um, to know. Now, you can't see the whole top. There's a little bit more up there, but I want, to, I want you to see it in relation to the ground. I'll, I'll move up uh, in a moment. But that's, that's the blue that I'm going to be working on. And as you can see, it's already got a certain sort of, you know, interest going on in that you've got a dark bit and your light bit and vague shapes of things that could be clouds. Um, and you've got the salad down here. And um, there's a, that's an absolute, um, what's the word I want here? Smorgasbord of potential. This is the bit I really, you might, you might have guessed this if you've seen my stuff before. You might have guessed already, you know, I really look forward to doing the skies. And it's true. I'm just going to do a little bit more, a bit more wipery on there. It's just to reduce paint. I'm not trying to actually make clouds out of light spots if they just happen to look like that. A lot of sky painting, depending on your point of view and your approach to painting, a lot of um, good skies are actually accidental. Some people um, paint clouds for weeks before they finished. I like to get everything done in the first hour of painting. And again, as usual, I have no idea how long we've got, uh, you know, to this point in the picture, but um, it seems that people do like my longer videos, so I'll just keep going. I won't try and speed it up or cut anything out. I've probably cut out a swear word or two already up to this point, but uh, you won't know because I've cut them out. Now, OK, so basically I took that much paint off. It's not really much. It's just, you know, it's more oil than paint. And actually, most of it's on me. So, um, like so. So this is this is the fun bit. Well, one of the fun bits, anyway. So I need to get some white paint. And uh, same as everybody else, I use titanium white. Um, because it, that's pretty well all you can get nowadays. Nice big slug of white paint and a, I think my largest palette knife, possibly. Well, it's sort of, it's quite large. It's not long or anything, it's just large. This one, that, that I can pick up a lot with that one. Uh, maybe it doesn't look too big, you know, next to the painting, but the other one I've got is very long. Uh, but there's no need for that on this. Now, what I could have done, I could have got a brush and started to dab some cloud on there, but I'm going to just do it this way to start with. And that is just get a load of paint on this, like so, and um, just see what happens. And let's just put it on. The thing about this um, sky, if, you, if, you, uh, if I show you the original again, I'll just show you now quickly on the screen. You can see that it's got this nice, free, very, very random type of sky. There's like, you know, there's no actual bobbly bits. It's, um, it's quite, uh, how do I put it? It's sort of ragged, isn't it? It's a bit ragged, but it's effective. And, um, and it's, this is the only process, actually, that you might feel that you're wasting a bit of paint, you see, because I've put that on there, and this is now blue. doesn't matter that you can put, you can use up what's on the palette knife until there is no more paint on it, or it's just completely turned blue. And then just give it a quick wipe, get a pile more white paint, like so. I mean, it's on quite thickly, but you don't want peaks, if you know what I mean. Uh, you want solid bits of paint, but no mountains. And I don't mean mountains like no paintings of mountains. I mean, the paint needs to be quite flat. 
and then you just do this. There is no big mystery. The only mystery is, well, the only trick, as I always say, and I repeat and repeat and repeat, is do it, it's like dance as if nobody's watching. Don't worry about it, just get the paint on and the magic will appear when you start to go over it with a dry brush. So don't, don't fill it in completely, leave some, leave some blue bits in between the white. So in other words, you know, keep it um, contrasty because contrast in skies is as important as contrast uh, on the actual landscape. And, um, and again, I'll repeat, take your clouds off the edge of the painting. I'm going to have to move the camera again so you can see the top. and try not to get paint on the camera. It's never a good idea. Okay. So, I think, yeah, you can probably see enough there. Okay. So as you can see, uh, there's still a bit to go before I get enough white on there. And the amount of white that I've used is, is a fair amount already. This is the only part of the, you know, one of my paintings where you're spending a lot of money on paint, and that is the white. It's, uh, people buy more tubes of white paint, I think, than any other colour. So there we are, we continue doing that. This can be done in lots of stages, but I'm doing it, I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible. So let's just check out some white over there. I might speed up this next bit just until I fill that because it'll be absolutely clear to you what's going on. So hold on to your palette. Okay, back to normal speed. So that's that's the relatively easy bit. And um, relatively easy, I suppose. Next thing is this again, this big this big brush, which I've said it before, but it's a bit like a dog on a stick. Uh, there's enough hair there to make an average Yorkshire Terrier, I think. And uh, all I'm doing is just taking off some of the blue that got on there earlier. I'll actually have to wash this now. After all these years of having this brush and looking at it and thinking, shall I use it? Shall I just stick to the really cheap ones? Because this, this one cost about 20 euros. Uh, my average brush that I use costs just over two euros now, I think. Um, but this, yeah, I'll have to give this a, a shampoo and rinse, I think. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to skim that. It'll make a mess to start with, but uh, like I said, um, this is sort of done in layers, and we'll get back to it um, later. So all I'm going to do with this now is smoothing them. Not, um, I don't want to lift paint and move it around. All I want to do is blur a little bit, which is hopefully what's happening. And you do it in different different angles, different directions. And it will make it will make um, streaky lines. There's one there, I think. You might be able to see it. It's nothing much, but you don't you want to avoid them if, if you can. Unless you're of course painting something really up to date and you're into um, painting contrails in the sky, uh, then you know I suppose it could be quite useful. There we go. So just wipe off the surplus 
And then let's get back to it again. It's quite fun. Like I said, you know, I think, or maybe I said it in another video, you don't quite know what you're going to get. Just as a, a little hint, what I normally do is like a cross shape and then the diagonals. So in fact what I'm doing, I'm, <laughs> it's almost like I'm painting the Union Jack flag in the sky. I use all those angles. And then if there's anything you want to, you know, really change dramatically, for instance here, it's quite a build up of paint there. Uh, so I would dig into it with the corner a little bit. Not much because um, cause that can happen. But then again, who cares? It's a sky and clouds basically don't care where they go. There's no point trying to make a, well, that's my opinion only, you know. It's like putting a disclaimer on your video. I don't want to offend any other art. Well, I don't think it would offend an artist. If you're a professional, you're reasonably thick skinned anyway, I think. But um, everyone has their own ways of doing things. I just happen to think that this is um, one of the quick ways of doing it. And let's face it, I mean, how long have I spent on that? And this is big, you know. Uh, the size is 80 centimetres wide by 60 deep, and the uh, inches measurement is, um, I'll probably put it on the screen. Uh, it's fair size anyway. It's about, I think it's 31. I mean, that's a lot of cloud painted in a few seconds, really. So, now that I see it blurred nicely, okay, I'll start thinking about how I can just add the, the really light bits. I'll just put the, pre, the original painting on the screen again. There you are. So you can see how fresh and white the sky looks. So this isn't at that stage yet. This could be another one of these part, uh, part one of two parts videos. In fact, I, it probably will be, uh, because there's not really much chance of me getting the whites on that completely white now because it's always going to blend in with the blue. So the, the, what you're seeing as white clouds here are, uh, if you isolate, well, if you put something white next to them, you can see uh, the difference. So this is white, you know, apart from the few bits of printing. So this, what the white bits on that are actually a very, very pale uh, blue. When that's dry, you can add more white, do the same thing again, and you'll get that stunning contrast effect. There we go, a nice sort of sweep to the clouds going off that way. I think I might leave it like that. Um, when you come to do this uh, effect, if you decide to do it, uh, remember you are barely touching the paintings, hardly any contact. and. Uh, it, it may go wrong, you know, the first few paintings you do, so maybe the best way to learn this is not to do all this stuff that I've done at the bottom. Just do a panel that's just sky. Get that right. Once you know that you're confident with the technique, uh, you can then actually put it over a landscape uh, to get the full effect. And it, it's quite stunning. Um, you know, check your brush for bristles, which is what I should have done with this brush, but I didn't. So there are one or two bristles in the middle of this, and I'm going to just try and get them off. I think I might, I'm not sure whether there's still one there or whether it's just a mark left. Oh no, there is a great big, enormous, oh, you can probably see it now, maybe not. But from where I'm standing, it looks like a girder. So when you get that off, don't worry about what it does to the paint. That's completely skanked, that, but it's very easily fixed. Just with a few sweeps of the brush. That's enough. Um, so there we are, there's my sky. And I think I will probably leave it at that for now. Don't forget what I said about clouds going off the edges and off the top. If you want realism, do it. Trust me on that. 
it's obvious really that's what clouds would do clouds don't blow around to conveniently fit into your painting that you're doing they just they go where they want right okay so the bottom left corner here um, you'll be amazed at how quickly you can do that um, so what I'm doing I'm just mix it's the same brush really I haven't Obviously, I haven't cleaned it. As you can see, it's just covered in sludge. <clears throat> um, and all I want to do is just do something, you know, that looks like a landscape. So let's see what can we do. Landscapes, you have to remember, landscapes are made out of an unbelievable amount of textures. Which is why some people don't paint them, because they don't know how the heck they're going to... Uh, paint all that shrubbery and stuff and they think well it will take hours to do that and as you can see what I'm doing here in this lower field I suppose that's what it is isn't it uh, is just sort of pushing the brush around a bit and um, just filling it in really and it you know it sort of works and it works because your eye and brain well your brain uh, wants to rationalise what it's looking at, and it's um, it's doing that all the time. When you look uh, at a landscape, you don't you know it's a landscape. You know what's going on basically, but you don't analyse every square inch of it. You just know that certain shapes mean that a certain thing is happening in the landscape, and that's what I try to do. For instance, let's let's just have a let's just add a bit of a bit of light there, just you know, for the heck of it. Not a lot of light, I must say. And of course, if you if you've got so much paint on it that you can't comfortably do that, um, just take some off. So we'll just have a line there, just a little a little um, stripe. Now, there's something else I was going to do, wasn't there? So we've got we've got texture down here. We've got stuff. Uh, in fact, let's put a few extra bits of texture in there. Let's have another bit of light there. And then let's make these two look as though they're connected slightly. Like so. Just takes one touch. Now, uh, this bunch of trees here, let's go and, let's go and look at that. So what we what we've got is, I hope, this sort of slightly magical look. I don't know what I don't know why I call it magical, but to me it's slightly mysterious, you know, this, this sort of secret little wood here, who knows what's going on in there. Um, so the trunk either end of it, you see, gives it dimension because you can see either side of that trunk, you can see either side of that trunk, even though it's just, it's just a line, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy about it. It's not, um, it's not necessarily the most exciting bit of painting you've ever seen, but it's effective. Uh, and that's what you want, really. You want, you want to produce a picture that's effective with the minimum amount of work and I think the minimum amount of brush marks because it um, brush strokes or rather the difference between brush strokes and brush marks. Um, it, just, uh, it just works. As soon as you can make something work and stop, don't keep tickling it, don't fiddle with it. Actually, um, I don't know, maybe there's a mental trick you can, uh, you can use, you know, like, <clears throat> like putting an elastic band around your wrist and flicking it every time you feel that you're going to lose your temper or whatever, you know. So maybe, maybe try that, but as you're painting, flick, flick your elastic band when it's time for you to back off away from your picture. Okay, now this is what I was doing earlier. This is this um, very cheap scruffy brush. And I just want to sort of uh, exaggerate that effect a bit more. I don't know whether it will. There. Okay, so that now gives you another dimension to whatever's going on in that wood. It's not right, but it's, it's, the, it's the effect that I'm trying to explain. I can make it right by bringing the foliage back down on the top edge, I think. 
Yeah, it could be light, lighter plants growing in front or a bit of light showing through, I don't know, but I think it needs to be broken a bit more. Let's just do that. It's better. Right, so um, we've got this overhanging stuff either side of the copse. And I think I'm just going to... Ah, I think my disc is full. Now, my camera just told me my disc was full. I think I might have caught it just in time. You might, I, don't, I don't know how much you've uh, missed. Maybe nothing. Hopefully it's all OK. But working on this tree, uh, this bunch of trees here, what I was about to do was just make that shape at the end there slightly more pleasing. It's just a little bit, you know. Sometimes the only way to describe a shape is with a sound, and that is definitely... So uh, the other side is quite nice, so I think that works all right. But I want to just change this a bit uh, and just lift it. That's all it takes, just, just something like that. Except I'm not quite like that enough, but I just want to increase it a bit, like so. Get it more of a tree shape. And then what's actually hanging down that way, I think just needs to be strengthened slightly like that. That's probably enough. No, it isn't. Not happy. Let's just take it out even more to there. That's better. And that was it, really. I hope I, hope I didn't lose anything before that. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of light through there. A little bit more, um, a bit more twiggery. Just seen something I don't like there. Of course, I'm in the way when I do that, aren't I? Almost. Sometimes it's just one tiny touch. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, uh, the other, what I was going to do is, uh, again, just with a piece of paper, uh, make it textured. In other words, roll it into a ball. Did you even see that? Yeah, roll it into a ball. Like so. Okay. Just, I'm just after breaking down the flat surface of the paper. Now that I've done that, that's reasonably bumpy on the end there, that piece of paper. All I'm going to do is just add a little bit of light to this. And again, it's like dab, turn, dab, turn, dab, turn. Don't just repeat it because it will look like a repeat pattern. And you don't want that because trees don't do that. OK, so it's just to bring out a few little bits of light. So I have one up the top there that's a bit lighter, like so. And then suddenly you get this effect of foliage. It's quite nice to have that dark, then, uh, beg your pardon, light, and then a little bit of light there, and then dark around it. That works nicely, except I want to increase it a little tiny bit. One touch or two touches, and that's it. And then you're done. A little bit there. Okay, I think I'm reasonably happy. The only other thing I might do, just to show off... Well, no, no, wrong word, Stewie, not show off. Educate you. I'm going to use this, and I'm going to put the odd light trunk. You see, a trunk looks dark against light, and they're not necessarily... You know, I, I think these are hawthorn. Okay, so hawthorn trunks aren't known for their darkness. So against a dark background, they would look light. So let's just have a little hint of something or two. Like that. So you see the sort of depth that it starts to give your painting. It's really, uh, you know, I, I always say this, but there are certain stages of a painting where everything starts to fall in place and it all starts to feel more like fun. And that's probably the stage that this is now. Uh, it's quite difficult to go wrong. I know someone won't, but won't agree with that. But you can't make everybody happy. Now then, before I go, usual stuff. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Um, and if you want to come to my Zoom lessons, 
If you go to my Facebook page, all the links are going to be in the description box below this video. Um, but the Zoom classes are really good fun. It's like joining a, a friendly club of painters. So I paint for an hour and then we talk, um, usually for half an hour, although it quite often goes much longer than that, depending on uh, how tired I am or anyone else is. But, you know, it's really... Um, fun. Okay, now you didn't see what I did there. Should have shown you. I'm just going to point the camera over this way. And I promise you I will go in a minute. Okay. <laughs> I wish I, I... It's so annoying for me when I do that, because I want you to see what I'm doing. And I just did this, not realising you couldn't see what I was doing. Anyway, yeah, you can come for lessons here, or you can join my Zoom class. There's usually two of those a month. And uh, it starts at 4pm French time, which is Greenwich Mean Time plus one. So it's three o'clock in the UK. And America, when, it, it, there's a, when you click the link, which is always popping up on my Facebook page, or you can go to my website and ask me and I'll send you a link. Uh, the link will convert to your currency, I think, and it will also give you the time of the lesson in your time. Whatever it knows what zone you're in, and it'll give you the time. And um, I have to say, the, most of the people who attend the class are from the US. I think there's uh, one or two English people. Um, but seems that most of my followers seem to be in, in America. Right, so there we are. I think that's it for the day. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.